January 17th of 2017, of course, school year, first meeting of the, of the year. Reminder to all, to please silence your cell phones. Thank you. All right, so what follows on the agenda? We're going to begin with the invocation by Father Timothy Labeau from the Holy Redeemer Catholic Church. Um, after that, we will have a, a, a Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Dr. Mr. Tom Phelps will help lead us in that. The National Anthem, we are very happy and excited to have here Horizon Voices from Horizon Middle School under the direction of Janelle Kaufman. Our mission statement will be read by Sherry Weretka, our bullying prevention specialist. And translation services brought to us by our very dependable Miss um, Dalia Bendita. So at this point, I'd like for everyone to stand up and begin. Thank you for inviting me to be here this evening and sharing with you. We would ask uh, God to be with us as we pray. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we gather together in your name and in your power, for we know that you are the creator of all things and all people. We have celebrated the great work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and many others who have gone before us who have shown us the way to justice and truth. We thank you for this opportunity to share that justice and truth and your word and your power with our students through it in the way that they learn and grow to become human beings and to be worthy and good citizens of our country. I pray your blessing upon this school board that has gathered together on each of these men and women who have chosen to serve and who have given of their lives in service. I pray for our teachers and administrators and all of those who daily are in the classroom and in our schools to share the great mission that we have and the vision that you have given to us. I pray also for our students, for those who will grow and learn and become. We know that they are our hope for our future and for our world. So I call upon you to bless all who are gathered here this night, all who will be presenting and sharing all of the, the, the decisions that will be made and all of those outcomes of those decisions that they may always be in your care and with your blessing and your truth. We pray and ask all of these intentions and prayers from our hearts as we ask all things from you, our God. Amen. <laughs> oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light one so proudly we held at the door?
did great. They did great. Our mission statement is inspiring all learners to reach their highest potential as responsible, productive citizens. Thank you. Thanks, Sheriff. <clears throat> My name is Dalia Medina. I'm here to provide translation services. Mi nombre es Dalia Medina. Estoy aquí para probar servicio de traducción. Gracias. All right, so first order of business, we have a presentation. Um, by CFE Federal Credit Union and Valencia College um, in support of Future Teachers Academy program. Joining us is our doctors, mm -hmm. Sandy Sugar, Scott Fritz, and Kathleen Plinsky. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening members sir. Members of the board, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Pace, and other staff and friends, uh, it's nice to be with you this evening. I have not joined you for a board meeting in oh, at least a decade, so it's nice to see you again. Well, I was here then. <laughs> yes, you were. You are the oldest rat in the barn, I believe is the, the phrase. Yeah, glad to see you all. Uh, we have so many partnerships between our institutions, and uh, we thrive together, and we continue to create new things together, and uh, we're not afraid to tackle some of the t more challenging issues. And one we're tackling together now is the future of our core of teachers. Uh, it won't surprise you to know that Florida historically has hired about 30,000 new teachers every year, even during the recession, and that all the colleges and universities in Florida combined produce fewer than 3,000 a year. We've had the luxury of, of uh, cherry picking from Wisconsin and Michigan and New York and a lot of other places that uh, just somehow aren't as pleasant as uh, Kissimmee and St. Cloud and some of the other uh, communities here in South Florida, mid Central Florida. Uh, that's not so true anymore. And, uh, it is becoming now almost a national emergency to deal with the shortage of thoroughly qualified, credentialed, ready-to-practice professional teachers. And uh, we need to tackle the problem. And so we've begun a partnership. It's a modest pilot project to prove uh, the concept, and then we hope to go to scale. And that project really is together in, in partnership your school district, our college, the University of Central Florida, and our investors, including the CFA Federal Credit Union, um, are working towards producing a whole new core of grow your own teachers among the best and brightest of our own <coughs> students. And you're going to hear more about that in just a minute, so let me, to, to share a little more of the program details, introduce Dr. Kathleen Plinsky, one of the real bright stars at Valencia College. Good evening. Good evening. It is uh, certainly my pleasure to share with you the details of our Future Teachers Academy that we have been working collaboratively on for the last several years. And its goal is to develop future teachers for the school district of Osceola County. And we are so very pleased uh, with the partnership with CFE Federal Credit Union that we'll be able to provide scholarships for students who enroll in the program. We will recruit students for this program from the high schools in Osceola County. So it really is a true grow our own teachers program. Students in the program will start their education at Valencia. They will earn an Associate of Arts degree at the Osceola campus and they will complete all of the program prerequisites necessary for a bachelor's degree in education. Students will participate in the program in a cohort format, meaning that they will take their courses together as a group and their courses will be guaranteed to be scheduled on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, Thursdays, intentionally leaving Mondays and Fridays available for them to serve as substitute teachers in the school district when, as you might imagine, substitute teachers are in highest demand. That will, of course, provide them with outstanding work experience, develop that professional experience in the schools, and develop a sense that they are sure that they want to be future teachers as a result of that experience. In addition, we'll be able to offer specialized learning support for students in the program, including helping them prepare for the multiple examinations that are required as part of the teacher certification process. After completing their Associate of Arts degree at Valencia, they will then transfer to the University of Central Florida through Direct Connect to UCF, and they will complete a bachelor's degree in elementary education which is offered in its entirety 
at UCF's regional campus located at Valencia's Osceola campus. So students will be able to complete the entire program without needing to leave Osceola County. To share a few more details about the tremendous partnership that we've developed with the school district, it is now my pleasure to ask Dr. Scott Fritz to come forward and talk more about the program. Board and audience, when, when I tell you this is a true partnership, I, I, Kathy, we must meet several times a, a month uh, to talk about the work and the initiatives <laughs> that we're doing together. Um, I can't think of a, a better project because I got to tell you, you'll find educators uh, that were truly passionate about taking our torch and passing it on to the next generation. In fact, if you ask most educators um, what they played in school, when they were children, they would play school. Uh, for me, I played school and I played construction, and you can see which one won. Um, but, I, but I will tell you that um, we are very excited. We have four teaching academies right now. Uh, one is at St. Cloud High School, one is at Pass, one is at Osceola High School, and the last one is at Gateway. We have 141 students in this uh, Future Teacher Academy right, as of right now. And so let's talk a little bit what that's going to look like. Uh, Valencia staff and the school district of Osceola County will meet with seniors that are graduating our schools and share with them about the possibilities of this program. We will, we will pluck the very best from our schools uh, and bring them back. The goal is that they'll enter a cohort. Uh, we will select 20 to 25 students for the first year. And as we bring them through, and they, as most of you know, our teachers must, uh, must do an internship. They will do that in elementary in their junior and senior year. We commit that if they are in good academic standing, that they will earn $2,500 for their junior internship and $2,500 for their senior internship. And if they graduate with that degree in elementary education and they are in good standing, that we will employ them. So we're very excited about this work. Uh, can't think of a better way to make sure that the very best and brightest are stay, staying right here in our county doing this great work. At this time, I'd like to bring Kevin Miller up. He's the incoming CEO for CFE. Thank you. I just want to take a minute to thank Osceola County, Valencia College, for letting us partner with both of you. This is a fantastic program. Uh, it's, we were founded by educators. It's been our mission to support education, and we're going to make sure that we continue to support education by partnering with people such as yourselves in Valencia. And uh, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to be a part of such a wonderful program. Thank you. And I should mention the investment is a $125,000 uh, gift from CFE Federal Credit Union. Thank you You're very welcome much. at any board meeting. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if there are any questions, we certainly would entertain them. Board, any questions or comments? Yes. Um, first off, uh, Dr. Sugar, Dr. Plinsky, welcome. We're so glad you're here tonight. And welcome to the Central Florida, uh, to be the CEO of Central Florida Credit Union. Have you, is this, have you been there for a while? Yeah, I've been there since 2004. Okay, okay. I know, I know Joe. I didn't know he was retiring. Okay, good. Well, you've, CFE Credit Union has been a great partner with your program at Point Santa High School. We appreciate everything that you do. Valencia has been terrific. I mean, we couldn't ask for a better um, secondary partner in our community. We're thrilled that you're here. We're, we're thrilled about this program. And, you know, you bring $125,000. That's, you know, that's, that's greatly appreciated. And as I said, you're welcome at any board meeting, um, please. So again, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Dr. Sugar, Dr. Plinsky, and CFA Credit Union. You're a great community partner. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you as well. I mean, I, I won't go on as long as Jay, but as the son of, son of two educators and, and from an education family, I want to say thank you. I know we just were discussing earlier about, um, you know, just a national shortage of teachers. And what a great response. Uh, thank you, Valencia and CFE. We thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Mr. Thacker. Just I don't want to pile on to with the thank yous, but uh, certainly keeping people in this county is near and dear to my heart personally. And I think if we can uh, uh, keep families together and get people trained here, educated here, and a job here, there's very little reason for them to go to leave. So uh, just on another quick note, uh, I don't know, some of you may or may not know that Dr. Sugar is also a musician. And for being a doctor and, and very, very bright, I was at your thing at Winter Garden Theater a couple weeks ago. 
he brought his daughter up to sing, and after that, she made everybody look bad. She was unbelievable. So, <laughs> it was great. That was a great one day. proud father to another. Could, thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you my, very much, uh, Dr. Shute. Mine will be brief. My peers have already said it, but I do want you to know that I'm very grateful as well for your work, your partnership, and Dr. Plinsky, your ongoing support of everything you do in Osceola County and to support our district. CFE has pointed out you've been an ongoing great partner for this school district, for our teachers, and for our community, and we want you to know we do sincerely appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank Not you. much I can add except that, um, you know, um, really the potential for this is incredible. I mean, and, um, I'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to what this is going to yield for us in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and let me just close by saying um, uh, it is a joy to work with your leadership team. Uh, Very, yeah. it, good it's people. not always that easy with school districts. They have a lot of people pulling at them, and uh, some are so large that they they don't even know what they're doing uh, most of the time. Let me tell you, it is a tremendous asset to have the team in place that you have. We love working with them. We know we get decisions made quickly, and they're nimble and responsive, and there's never any question what the first value is, and it's the, the learning experience of those kids. Uh, so the values are all in the right place. We, we love working with you. Thank you. Superintendent Pace. And there's a check presentation, Chairman Soto, if you'd like to come down. Sure. <clears throat> Check's written to Valencia, but it's going to recognize and honor our students, and we're very excited about it. <laughs> we don't take a percentage. We don't. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> you can't take that to a drive through can you? <laughs> I was just going to ask, since, since you're here, Dr. Polinsky, if you would just indulge me with maybe a quick update on the new Valencia campus uh, serving the Poinciana community. I drive by it every day. I see what's happening, but I'd love to hear from you since we have you here. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate that opportunity. Uh, we are on schedule to open the campus in fall of 2017. So we are currently recruiting students for the opening class, if you will, of the Poinciana campus. Uh, we are planning to offer the full Associate of Arts degree at the campus, as well as a number of, of Associate of Science degrees, and in addition, a number of short-term training programs that lead directly to employment. So things like basic construction, um, forklift operation, uh, logistics, transportation, those sorts of things. Furthermore, uh, we'll be offering our, our intensive English program for residents of the community who want to enroll full-time and learn English language very quickly. Um, we are planning to offer our courses at the Poinciana campus, uh, again, in a, in a cohort format, very similar to what I described for the Future Teachers Academy, so that rather than students putting together a course schedule every semester, they will sign up for a program with a guaranteed schedule for the length of the program. So they might sign up, for example, for an Associate of Arts with an interest in majoring in a STEM field, and they would know that their classes meet on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 8.30 till 2.30 in the afternoon for the entire length of that program. They don't have to worry about, am I going to have this class when I need it? Am I going to have to rearrange my job or my childcare each semester? That will be guaranteed for them. So they'll be signing up for a program rather than semester by semester for their classes. Um, I will take this opportunity to announce that we have a scholarship workshop this Thursday at Liberty High School at 7 o'clock, as well as Poinciana High School next week, Thursday, also at 7 o'clock. Um, we're very hopeful that we'll have a significant number of students attend. We are waiving the application fee um, for any students who apply to Valencia at our scholarship workshop, and we will help students complete their scholarship applications, both with the Education Foundation of Osceola County as well as with the Valencia Foundation. We recognize sometimes that that pesky essay is what prevents students from submitting their scholarship application. So we'll actually have Writing Center consultants available to help read first drafts of essays and help students get over that hump so they can get that application submitted, uh, earn a scholarship, and come to college. Dr. Plinsky, can you please send an email to Dr. Pace about that workshop coming up so that we can distribute it out? Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Okay, 
Very good. Thank you. I, I want to thank you. And you know, uh, our conversation goes back many, many years before I was even on the school board about what we need to do to increase our post-secondary enrollment rate and what the partnership with Valencia and the school district can look like. And in fact, tonight we'll have a conversation about our graduation rates and the progress we're making. But I do want uh, Valencia to know how much we appreciate your investment in the community, uh, what that campus is going to mean, uh, mean for District 3 residents. And I just want you to know that anything I can do to continue to support that initiative, you have my support. Great. Thank you so Thank very you. much. I don't work with, yes. What's your targeted opening enrollment for the Point Siena campus? <clears throat> we are targeting 1,500 credit students and 1,000 continuing education students when we open in the fall. That's pretty ambitious. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we strive, we strive for big goals. Yes, and sir. If it, was, if it was somebody else besides you, I wasn't sure you could do it, but I know you'll get 3,000. So <laughs> um, I've got all the faith in the world in you. Appreciate the confidence. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and in addition, we are um, we're still working out finalizing the details, but we are planning on offering a scholarship for the students who enter Point Siena's first class. Um, so for the students who register for one of those full-time cohort programs, uh, they will earn a scholarship uh, to attend the Point Siena campus. We're really excited about what that financial support will do in terms of lifting those numbers the, as well. For the, for the full two years they attend or just for the first semester? Those are the details that we are working out. Dr. <laughs> Sugar for the first full two years, Dr. Sugar. <laughs> Good. Mr. Chairman, can we pile on with some praise since we're doing it? Man, I say, man, thank you so much. For no, 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 hold on. I want to say something. Oh, you want to say something? Go, go. <laughs> I just want to say that uh, identifying some of the needs that were near and dear to my heart, as you were talking about, is we have the, uh, because I just spoke with, it's doctor. Is it Padone or Padoni? Padoni. Padoni, that's what I thought. She's going to present tomorrow to our legislative delegation, our Thursday, uh, when we do our agricultural uh, update for the county because of the Project Salsa, which is uh, where we have our, I know you don't want to call it direct connect, but basically a system in place where w uh, the College of Agriculture, University of Florida has positions of environmental science, natural resource conservation, and, the, and such. And we're going to have some openings for these kids that go to Valencia for two years and a program in place, and then they can go right on to the University of Florida. I think it's a huge deal. I know yeah. the USDA is involved. I think it's great, but thank you to your team and your work for that as well. We can just keep going, I'm sure. If you, no, <laughs> you know, well, all of this goes to the discussion that we had earlier, the strategic planning about, you know, you know what's wrong with us having a culture, a local culture that, um, that value intellectualism, that we value education, you know, that we look towards education to, as, as the foundation for our hope for the future, for our country, you know, for, our, for, for our planet. And this is part of it. And, you know, it, it's just very, it's very exciting to see what's going to come in the future with Point Siena, the, the, our teacher academy. I don't know. The sky's the limit almost. We couldn't Good. do it without Thank your you partnership. For Thank, Thank you. you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Sugar, don't wait 10 years to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Jay will be gone by then. <laughs> uh, sure. May, maybe. <laughs> our next presentation. We are going to celebrate Literacy Week proclamation um, that's going to be brought to us by Michael Allen, Dr. Allen, and um, Jenny Bracco. Yes, yes. Uh, good evening, board, to uh, help kick off our statewide 2017 Celebrate Literacy Week, which is January 23rd to the 27th. Two of our district's uh, English language arts resource teachers are here with a very special guest. Mr. Thomas Bracco, third grade student at Celebration K-8, to deliver a proclamation for your consideration. Right. <coughs> Let's hear it. Good afternoon. There we go. Proclamation Celebrate Literacy Week Florida. Whereas the school district of Osceola County, Florida, has the goal of guiding every student in the K-12 system to read at or above grade level in making literacy the priority of every citizen in Osceola County. And whereas changing the literacy culture of our schools will enable students to be successful in the 21st century from pre-kindergarten to post-secondary by raising expectations of teachers and students. And whereas involvement in literacy programs and projects is increased through school and community aware awareness of such programs. And whereas 
promoting the enjoyment of reading for all ages, children to adult, adults, increases literacy rates, and whereas parents, families, neighbors, and mentors play a crucial role in helping children become successful, independent readers. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the school board of Osceola County hereby declares the week of January 23rd through January 27th, 2017, Celebrate Literacy Week Florida, this 17th day of January 2017. So moved. Second. Uh, any um, discussion? I couldn't have read it that good, young man. You did a nice job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank just, you. just a brief discussion on that on my part is that um, what was it, the NBA or some, some professional association came up with the slogan that reading is fundamental with a big capital fun. Um, and indeed, it is that. Um, I can tell you that personally, it is my number one activity, much to the chagrin of my fellow board member, <laughs> Mr. Jay Wheeler. Um, He's things. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he, he, he rather me go biking and, and swimming every. I'm like, listen, you know what? I like to read. That's my pastime. Mm -hmm. Variety and, <laughs> and, um, and yes, reading is especially good when you can, and you can make reading fun, correct? Mm -hmm. And so um, I'll, I'll share with you, I, I like to pick out a book to read with my children, and then at the end of the week or the month, however long it takes, we discuss it. So, um, yes, we celebrate literacy here. Uh, any other comments? Just great job, young man. You did a great job. Yes. Very proud. Thank you. You read that Beautiful. professionally, man. Awesome. Well done. Yes. Okay, so we have a motion to approve by Mr. Booth. Second. 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 And second by Mr. Weissheim. Correct? Correct? All right, board. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no, none. Uh, the proclamation passes 5-0. Congratulations. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. All right, so our next presentation, oh, I love this, kindness. Kindness, I love that. So anyways, it is Kindness Month Proclamation. And for that, we have Sherry Waretka. And um, you're going to read it, right? Oh, yes. Well, proceed. I'll introduce uh, Ms. Rebecca. So <laughs> January 23rd through February 18th marks Kindness Month. And uh, again, a proclamation for your consideration uh, from PBIS and Bullying Prevention Specialist, Ms. Sherry Rebecca. Thank you. Whereas any day, week, or month is a good time to remind us all of the need to remember that kindness is, is an essential ingredient in the creation and maintenance of a civilized society. Whereas in the heart of all of us lies the idea that we hold the power of kindness within us. And whereas by knowing, understanding, and actually using this power, we have the ability to send out a positive ripple that may travel for miles. And whereas through random acts of kindness, we can promote healthy behaviors and positive attitudes within our schools. Whereas we seek to cultivate caring, kindness, and compassion within our schools and community through our students and staff members by teaching them to make a difference through random acts of kindness. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the School Board of Osceola County, Florida proclaims January 23rd, 2017 through February 17th, 2017 as Kindness Month. So moved. Second. I do have a challenge for all of you board members and Bring leadership team. Um, I have bands. I know I do this every time. <laughs> um, I have bands that say create kindness. I'd like you to wear these bands during the month, but I would also like you to not wear them very long because I would like for you to pass them on to someone else that you see either when you do a random act of kindness for someone, you can pass it on to them, or if you see someone else do a random act of kindness, you can pass it on and tell them to pass it on. Um, and then please tell me about those random acts of kindness. You can email me because my challenge to the school district is to commit 100,000 random acts of kindness during that month. So I'm hopefully in. you all will participate. Uh, board, any discussion? This is a fruit of the spirit, so I'm all for it. Kindness. Mr. Booth, any, any comments on kindness? No? I, I, I like kindness as well. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Thacker. Second. Second by Mr. Wheeler. All those in favor for kindness, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Crickets, crickets. All right, a cut at zero. Passes by zero. Thank you. <clears throat>
I'm going to go ahead and uh, I know you put on my kindness bracelet. <laughs> And selling a home to somebody so, that's not kind so of... So before I start... <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, yes, we will. She's not very kind, though. <laughs> she's a pretty mean lady. Thank you. No, no she's not. She's just a She's the best. She's the best. Right. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah, oh, man. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's do the um, public... My Talk. mother's great, by the way. I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> well, on the record, huh? You this, better this clarify. Is, Dr. Pace, would you agree this is a kind board? Mm -hmm. It's a very kind board. Okay. So you know, We're so. going to have a kind district. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. What, what, so, what kind? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, of, the, of the third kind. No, I'm sorry. Right. Okay, let's go ahead and um, move on with appointment and transfer, Dr. Pace. I am pleased to welcome Mr. Mark Locker to the podium. Board members, as you know, we are preparing to ramp up our facilities um, department in order to complete the sales tax projects as well as the uh, aggressive building plan that we have going. And Mr. Clinch and his team have chosen to recommend for your approval Mr. Mark Lockard for the Director of Design and Construction position. Throughout his career, Mr. Lockard has held the following positions, Construction Branch Chief for Shepard Air Force Base in Texas, Chief of Requirements Operations and Design Manager for the Peace Shield Program in Saudi Arabia. Technical Division Chief for U.S. Infrastructure for NATO, Program Manager for Air Base Operability at Eglin Air Force Base, Chief Engineer for Headquarters 8th Air Force at Barksdale Air Force Base, Chief of Outsourcing and Privatization for U.S. Air Force Reserve Command at Warner Robins, Project Manager for the Utilities Privatization Program, Facilities Project Manager for Orange County Public Schools, Senior Facilities Manager, Senior Facilities Manager, Comprehensive Renovations, and Senior Facilities Manager for Capital Renewal for Orange County Public Schools. Received his bachelor's degree from engineering in engineering from the University of Central Florida, master's degree in engineering management from the Air Force Institute of Technology, and as you might have guessed, he is a retired Air Force officer <laughs> where he served in various capacities in the civil engineering di discipline. So I am pleased to recommend Mr. Lockard for your consideration. Motion to approve us. Thank you. Uh, All right. Board, uh, got a motion to approve by Mr. Wheeler, second by Mr. Uh, Booth. Any discussion? I, I just wanted to say, when reading through this packet <laughs> and, and looking at this, uh, or the email I believe you sent, um, very impressed with your resume and glad that you're coming on board. And uh, thank you, Mr. Clinch, and, uh, and looking forward to working with you. You won't be bored. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a guarantee. Yeah. Okay. Well, Board. I just wanted to... Uh, offer up my sincere thanks for uh, being considered for this position and uh, you know, Superintendent Pace and of course Mr. Clinch. Uh, I can't tell you how excited and enthusiastic I am about rolling up my sleeves and helping you achieve your your mission of uh, making uh, you know reaching the highest potential for your learners. You can't do that without the right facilities oh, yes. and uh, you need New facilities because you're growing, and that's a wonderful thing. It's a double-edged sword, but it's, it is a good thing. You need to keep your facilities that you have in, in good operating condition, expand them as necessary, and, and do whatever modernization you know, is necessary. So all those uh, things uh, it, is a big task to take on, and you've got uh, a wonderful chief facilities officer that's going to uh, make sure that all that happens <laughs> so uh, again i'm anxious to uh, to get started i wanted to family? introduce my yes. my lovely wife kathleen got a here tonight oh, okay. all, right. all right so dr pace only brings stu superstars to us so, so we have a motion <laughs> superstars motion to approve by mr wheeler second by mr weissire <coughs> correct all right all those in favor vote aye, aye. aye. opposed no all right, motion passes 5-0. Congratulations. Welcome. Welcome to the team. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Dr. Pace? That's it for me, sir. That's it? That's okay, it. very good. All right, next order of business is our public comment. Let's see what we have here. We have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. We got five folks that are signed up for public comment. Anybody else wants to turn in the sheet right now is the moment to do it. Seeing none, and in no particular order, I'm going to call up the first one, Miss April Jackson. Three minutes. Um, you'll see by the light. 
I'd like to talk to Tyler. She's, this isn't her first rodeo. I know. April Jackson. It is Kelvin's, though. It is Kelvin's. <laughs> 722 Mabbitt Street, Kissimmee, Florida, president of Osceola County Education Association, representing the teachers and uh, ESP. Happy New Year, April. All right. Thank you. And first of all, I'd like to introduce our new employee. Ann Calandrino is now on board. Ann, want to stand up real quickly? As our uh, Uniserve director, you know Michelle has decided to retire in September. Okay. So we're bringing on new staff so that they can be trained by one of the best prior to Michelle leaving us. <clears throat> Thank you, Ann. Second thing, the last meeting I had the opportunity to attend, you guys were all talking about posting more and more information on the internet about our schools. And if I made eye contact with any of you, you saw the fear in my face. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a couple scenarios that scare me. Johnny has a non-custodial parent that he has supervised visitation with. Johnny shares with his dad his best friend is Frank. Their teacher doesn't post the picture of Johnny. Dad doesn't know what school Johnny goes to, but he knows that Frank is his best friend, but the teacher posts the picture of Frank. So now the non-custodial parent knows which school the child attends, knows who his best friend, and could very easily come to the school and get the child. This scares me because our number one job is to protect our children. Each and every time I post pictures of children on the OCEA website or something else, I have a signed form from a parent giving me to put those children's pictures on the internet for that purpose at that time. And the reason is to protect everyone. Because if something were to happen to Johnny, the district would be liable as well as the teacher. So before we go into this wonderful idea of sharing what great things we're doing at the schools, there are other parameters that we need to look at that concern is to protect our children. And that's our number one priority, is to make sure our children are safe. And if they're not safe, then we shouldn't be putting the information about them out. Every school has a form that they complete at the beginning of the year for the use of pictures and so forth. <coughs> I was the yearbook sponsor at Osceola High School, and I would go through 2,400 forms <coughs> to make certain that I didn't put a child's picture in the yearbook that didn't have a signed consent form. That took hours and hours. Teachers don't have the extra time to see what we do have permission to do for children and what we don't have permission to do. Well, most of us do, I'll tell you, we look at them. But when you're taking a group shot, you have to go through and check every single child's name to make sure there's consent for those children's pictures to appear in any type of publication. And once it's on the web, it's there forever. So I would hope that before we do that, we look at some guidance and get some parameters to protect everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Jackson. And Ricky, you got a question Ms. for me? I don't have a question. I just have some comments. I mean, this fear, exactly what you're, you're bringing up, is exact. And this idea, I think, if you heard me talking, was the idea of the communications director in Collier County. This fear you're talking about was exactly what he's trying to blow up and trying to get rid of. We are going to look at the forms. We are going to look. We are. Do we do have our staff looking into a protocol? And uh, you know, it's not more of a forcing. It's more of an encouragement. And it, what fits for you? So I think it's. I think it's a great idea. I still want to okay, see it happen. Okay, but the teachers' I still union in Collier is not really happy with it because there have been problems. I'm just going to put that out there. That's fine, and and that's what I want our staff to look into, mm -hmm. and and bring us back a report. I think that's the stage we're in now. I just uh, want to make sure we tick. Yeah, that's great. I hope, we, yeah, no, we need to. <laughs> need to be very careful before we just jump in. Thank you. Indeed, Ms. Jackson. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right. Our next um, public comment is from Mr. Brian Karakis. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Good evening. Brian Karakis, uh, 1809 Celebration Boulevard, and thank you for pronouncing my last name right. Not many people get that right the first time. Way to go. Sometimes I get hey. lucky. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I, try, I do try my best. Good thing you were <laughs> uh, I'm here today to address proposed changes to instructional salaries. Uh, I acknowledge that the state statute requires salary increases to be based on evaluations and not years of experience, but salary increases have not at all kept up with our cost of living in our region, and the situation is becoming untenable. A starting teacher in 2007-2008 made $37,500, and that was the last year teachers saw a salary increase in line with cost of living increases. This year, starting teachers earned $40,100, and in 
And if the starting rate had kept pace with inflation over the years, starting teachers would make just over $43,000, which is about two grand more than I make as a teacher with over eight years of experience. The fact of the matter is there is no level on our salary schedule where teacher salaries have not stagnated and an increase of $20.83 per paycheck for being classified an effective teacher isn't practical or respectable. We didn't enter this profession in order to become rich, but it is fair to expect that we would not become more impoverished as the years pass. And due to the district's lack of adequate yearly pay increases, this is precisely what has happened. Many of us, myself included, have two jobs to make ends meet. And teachers that are stretched that thin can't always bring out their best in the classroom, which helps neither the student nor the school. We know that the district has a lot of difficult choices to make when it comes to the budget, but saving a few bucks on the backs of teachers won't improve morale or test scores. Your teachers have been waiting many for a decade now for you to do right by them. The Education Association reluctantly agreed to support the half cent, ta uh, excuse me, the half cent tax increase because we know the district's critical infrastructure needs, infrastructure needs extra financial support, but our teachers need support from our district. Please think carefully about this critical issue and thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your comments. I just want to make a quick comment to say thank you for your tone. Uh, very much appreciated that we can have a civil discourse as we have these ongoing conversations. I want you to know I appreciate it. I believe I speak on behalf of the entire board when I say that. So thank you. You're welcome. Our next public comment is from Shannon Richards. Miss Shannon Richards, good evening. Please step up to the podium. Three minutes. Shannon Richards, 1809 Celebration Boulevard, English teacher at Celebration High School. Good evening. Before I begin, allow me to introduce the context of my situation. I've been teaching in Osceola County for 13 years. For the past three years, I've also been an assistant boys basketball coach. Two and a half years ago, I got a second job at Sylvan Learning Center in Dr. Phillips as a teacher, three days a week. I would leave school at 2.30, go to Sylvan, and work until 6.30, tutoring students from kindergarten through seventh grade. For the last two summers, I worked five days a week at Sylvan. These extra funds were generally used for gas. However, when this school year started, I had to stop working at Sylvan because of the increased workload. Every evening, I go home and work two to three hours after an already working seven and a half hours in school. This does not include the four to six hours of work I do on the weekends, just trying to stay ahead. The excessive workload, including creating mi biweekly mini assessments, Osceola rights pre and post, the new curriculum, and preparing my juniors for FSA retakes, add to the intense stress of my already too long to-do list. Financial struggle has become a norm in my household. My husband is off work on disability from a well-known local tourist destination because of his knees and back. In the past two years, he has had two knee surgeries and one back surgery. His employer notified him that they were cutting him down to part-time the first of this year because he did not meet his quota for hours in 2016, even though he was on long-term disability through their company. Part-time doesn't have health insurance. So he decided to apply for Medicaid. We looked into Obamacare, COBRA, and my own insurance. Each would be around $500 a month, something we just can't afford. He got a letter in the mail this last week saying that he was approved for Medicaid. And we completed the phone interview last Thursday. After giving our financial information, including rent, utilities, the must bills, my income and his disability payments, he was told that he qualified for Medicaid. Yay, he has insurance, that's great. To our surprise, we were also told that we qualify for food stamps. While my situation may be unique in some ways, it still raises valid questions. How is it possible that a teacher with 13 years in Osceola County doesn't make enough money to support her family? What does this say about my value as a teacher? I am saddened and shocked at this revelation. And I present this issue to you in hopes that you reconsider the value of teachers with experience in this county. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. Our next public comment is by um, Ms. Elfie Salisbury.
Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Alfie Salisbury, 5267 Images Circle, Kissimmee, Florida. I am uh, an eighth grade pre-algebra teacher at Horizon Middle School. Good evening, Dr. Pace, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Back in 1985, I walked across the stage of a small college in Ohio, and I began my teaching career. For the next 30 years, I became an advocate for thousands of students. Tonight, I'm advocating for thousands in my teaching profession. Back in 2004, when I chose to move to Florida to teach, I was excited about being able to teach in the Sunshine State. I moved with 18 years of experience, but only 14 of those years counted toward my new contract. I ended up taking a $10,000 pay cut, and times were difficult because I had a single income and bills still to pay. The only remedy was to work an extra job. I worked doing private tutoring and hospital homebound to supplement my income. I was working up to four nights a week until seven or eight o'clock at night. Usually by the weekend, I was exhausted. My experience has caused me to pay close attention to the new teachers moving into the state and into our district. Since I'm a new teacher facilitator and mentor, I try my best to make the transition as smooth as possible for those coming in. What concerns me, though, is the high amount of teacher turnover that we have, um, have experienced as a district. And I'm also concerned about the amazing teachers that we're losing to non-educational positions at a steady rate. As a new teacher, it's difficult to make ends meet on a single income while you're living by yourself. You almost always have to work an extra job just to survive. When you move to a new state without knowing anyone, it's difficult to find a roommate or someone to share your expenses so you're pretty much on your own. In addition to all the state and district requirements, your time is taken up by trying to survive financially. It's exhausting and sometimes discouraging. No one understands the hundreds and even thousands of dollars that are spent each year out of pocket in our classrooms. The lure of more money and better benefits for a job outside of education is very enticing. We're losing awesome teachers who should be in our classrooms educating our kids in Osceola County. Why should we have to, earn, to even consider changing professions just to make ends meet? Many who are against us have never worked in a classroom. They don't see the many hats that we have to wear on a daily basis. They don't understand that we pour our lives and souls into our job every single day. We are educating the future of our county and our state. Please consider the fact that we have amazing teachers in Osceola County, Florida. Many individuals go unnoticed and deserve recognition. Please consider the fact that we need to keep our awesome teachers without losing them to a non-educational work setting and field because of money. Please consider that we have amazing new teachers coming into the district who we need to support and encourage to stay. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. And our last public comment is from Ms. Alexandria Lovegrove. Yes. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> okay. Well, good evening. Uh, first, thank you for hearing all of our concerns this evening. Um, my name is Alexandria Lovegrove. Uh, I live at uh, 2561 Settlers Trail. And uh, this is my fifth year in Osceola County, seventh year teaching overall. And um, I'm clearly growing a family. And where, so where, one of my where, where one of our teach? concerns as a teacher, I'm sorry, Horizon Middle teach? School, Her, okay. eighth grade language arts. Um, so one of the concerns that we have as teachers is we notice that the county website boasts that uh, we have the highest starting salary for teachers in Central Florida. But what it doesn't make clear is that once you've passed that first initial year of teaching, the increases in salary are lackluster, if much at all. Um, what it doesn't tell teachers that are starting off is that later on in their personal lives, they will suffer because 10 years down the line, what started as a great salary for teachers when you're first out of college, $40,000 seems like a ton of money. But then 10 years down the line, when you're starting your family, buying houses, doing things what we consider would be the American dream, uh, that $40,000 or the subtle increases that we do see, if we see any at all, are really not enough to cover those expenses. So 
teachers in this county saw, I think, seven years without any raise, and many of our many of our teachers continued uh, to teach in the classroom, even in the face of not seeing any raises. And we did that because we love our students. We love Osceola County. We could go to other counties, and we don't. Um, Teachers don't teach to get rich, like my colleague, Mr. Karecki, said. We teach because it's our life passion, and we live for that moment when we see that look on the child's face when they get something. And without those pay increases and without, keeping the, uh, without a pay that would keep up with the cost of living, we're presented with a choice where we either can take our highly effective, our effective uh, degrees and everything else that we have in order to be those things into a more lucrative career outside of education in order to better provide for our families. And that is a truly devastating choice. I'm very good at what I do. I make sure of that. Um, I'd hate to have to take my talents elsewhere all just because um, this isn't enough for me anymore. So thank you so much for hearing me and um, have a great evening. Thanks. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, Comment by Mr. Wheeler, um, follow up. First off, to all the teachers who spoke, I appreciate you all coming so much, but I want to share something with you. Your timing is fortuitous from the perspective that tomorrow at 9 o'clock at the Osceola County Commission Chambers, which is right across the street from the courthouse, and I know you're all working, but I know you're passionate about this. Our state legislators are meeting our legislative delegation. These are, the, these are the state representatives, state senators who represent us in Tallahassee, and they, to a large de degree, control the dollars that come to us. Now, with that said, you're going to say, well, you elect us to represent you, and you, we've got to go make that case. They, when we talk to them about money, they almost run the other way, because I mean, they've heard it from us over and over and over again. And Ms. Richards, who I know, and I appreciate what you said, but I would encourage you to consider coming tomorrow, signing up to speak, because these lawmakers in Tallahassee that, con that control you know, what goes into public education need to hear. We've got a 13-year professional, highly trained, about your health insurance, more importantly, that qualifies for food stamps. I mean, that is, that's just, it's just not right. And I know it, and you know it, um, but you know, there's not money that we've got that we're just deciding not to give to anybody. I mean, it's, it's you know, we're, we're not, we can complain about funding also, but I'm not going to go there right now. But an opportunity does present itself tomorrow. In addition to that, you know, write a letter to the editor of the Orlando Sentinel. It gets read by these legislators, I promise you. Um, but come and let them hear what you've got to say tomorrow morning. They're there from 9 o'clock until there's nobody left to hear, to hear from. It's at the Osceola County Commission uh, Chambers on the fourth floor. There's free parking. Um, so it's a, you know, the fact that you're here tonight, I mean, the timing just happens to be that the legislative delegation is tomorrow. I encourage you to take advantage of it. Thank you, Mr. Wheeler. Uh, I was actually going to say almost the same thing that Jay said. Uh, that's the right tree to bark up. And, um, and if you can't go tomorrow, please, please send them an email. Send their staff email. They do read them, and they do respond to them. Uh, and if they don't, keep sending them to, until they do. Your state senator is Victor Torres. Your state representatives are Mike LaRosa, John Cortez, and Neil Cumbie. Um, so send them out. I have a quick question for, for Ms. Jackson. Yes. Are you able to attend tomorrow's delegation meeting? If you, if I, I will share, I will give you some of my time and I will stand there with you while you make your comments and your points to the delegation tomorrow morning. I'm available. Okay. I would encourage and, you to and bring I would, Richards with you. I'm not going to do it as an act of the board, but just as an individual board member, I will stand with you in that part. So it'll be after I'm done with my comments. And I will join Mr. Saito up okay. there with you. All right. Um, <clears throat> so that is all for our public comments. I don't think I missed them, anyone. Somebody turned it in and I didn't call them. No? Just a, just a quick comment. It, it was already said. We want you to know we appreciate you sharing your concerns with us. And I promise you, those that are in the room that know me know that this is absolutely true about who I am and what I believe. You're tremendously valued. And we understand you guys work hard. And we understand that there's a lot of difficulties that you face. I promise you we do. Um, our economy is, is not what people believe that it is. Um, inflationary costs are only going to continue to get worse with us as the Federal Reserve begins to raise key interest rates. 
this conversation is a conversation that's far bigger than all of us in this room and something that needs to continue to take place in a holistic manner so that we can begin to really deal with what's going on on a macro level across the United States when we deal with what's happening from a, a financial standpoint. I want you to know, and I say this with all sincerity, and I, I will say this for these board members, you genuinely have five board members that appreciate you, care about you, value you, and know that you're pouring your heart and your soul into these kids. So I know that's not a, a paycheck in your pocket tonight, but I hope that you know that the time that you took to be here this evening is not lost on us. And the fact that you guys every single day, despite often very difficult circumstances, continue to go into the classroom and do the best that you can. We do appreciate that. All right, so. Um, gentlemen, board members, yes, the, the next item, I uh, don't, if you notice that board member comments and positive comments were not done today. Um, we're gonna try something different and see how the comments work out at this point after public comments. You can go with whatever prepared statements you had, or maybe you could react or add, <laughs> or maybe you could react or response to something that you heard or, you know, whatever you wish to do, okay? Um, in no particular order, if somebody wants to go first, otherwise, Mr. Wheeler. I will. I'll All go right. first. Um, first, I want to recognize. We're going to use the timer system for Wheeler only. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I will, I, and, and, I, and I will tell your timer works improperly. Um, first up, I want to recognize uh, Mr. Clinch and his department and his contractor, Clancy and Thays, for the job they did on the Celebration High School um, turf field. It's beautiful. We had a ribbon cutting, and uh, Dr. Pace was able to come out. We appreciate Dr. Pace being there. Ryan Adams was there. And we got to watch the Celebration High School girls soccer team win 5-1. Five to, five to one. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Weiser was against Poinciana High School, uh, but I was hoping it was now a county team. But the, the Celebration High School girls did a great job. Then I have to recognize... Um, you know, we had a tragedy since our last board meeting um, with a hotel burned down in town. And 250 people got displaced, and we ended up taking them in at Kissimmee Middle School. And our maintenance staff, Mark Haveney and his team, uh, Chip, Roger, um, uh, they, were, they were terrific out there setting everything. Randy Shatera, Randy did a great job. Randy, to his credit, put my son to work, which was good. I brought my son out there. That was good. Um, and I also need to recognize um, Com County Commissioner Cheryl Grebe. She really kind of quarterbacked a lot of this stuff. And um, then when we were stuck with where these families were going to go, uh, U.S. Congressman Darren Soto, before he even got sworn in, uh, got Disney to take these families um, out of our school and to house them, give them passes, to uh, feed them over Christmas, which was great. So. Um, I, I've got to thank everybody involved, and, ca and including Kissimmee Police Department was incredible. The Red Cross was incredible. So I appreciate everybody who was involved. It was on all hands on deck, and, and not only we take care of these people, but then we, we were able to o open and have the school ready to go for our kids when school got back in session. So th oh, and I got to also thank Dr. Tim O'Leary. He came also because when he needed medical attention on his 60th birthday, he came and he attended to a 12-year-old girl, a pregnant woman, another, another, another person. So it was an all hands on deck, and it just goes to show how lucky we are to live in this community. That you know, in the mid, right before you know Christmas, everybody pulled together and did the right thing to help these families. So um, again, thank you to everybody who was involved. If I missed somebody, it was unintentional, but it was a great team effort, and we we did what we had to do to take care of people. So thank you, everybody. Great comments, Mr. Weeder. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, Mr. Booth. Yeah, I wanted to commend all the folks that helped, and Superintendent Pace did a fantastic job and of uh, kind of coordinating all that. Um, there's a lot more to the story, but she did a great job, and, and then the folks with the school district especially. Um, we had another tragedy, too, uh, over the break, and that was our principal butler out of Harmony High School, and, you know, we've, and thank you, Superintendent Pace and uh, Mr. Gilbert for going to Kentucky and attending uh, his funeral. But also, we had a memorial service a few days ago uh, at Harmony High School. And, I, it, you know, what was really special about it to me is some of the folks there that weren't in education or things like that are like, wow, this is a lot of people here. And I said, yeah, it shows you how important and how valuable educators are to a community. Um, and certainly, uh, we appreciated Mr. Butler's service. He was an outstanding individual. Um, I enjoyed working with him my three years here on the board. So um, rest in peace, Mr. Butler, but, and thank you to the staff for, for uh, 
remembering him and putting all that together. So thank you. Good words, Mr. Booth. Um, Mr. Backer. Okay. Mr. Weissire. They've said it's good. Um, Dr. Pace. All right. I don't have anything else to add. Um, welcome everyone to a new year. Let's see. Um, Can I say Happy New Year one more time? It's yeah. the 17th. Is it done? It's over. Well, no more. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. That is not a great you know, it's kind, great kindness. <laughs> I thought it was very kind. <laughs> Call Sherry. Call Sherry now. <laughs> All right. So, what do we have? Agenda modifications. Mr. Wheeler. I've got one item at the end of the agenda. Other than that, I'm good. Going to modify that item, or no, I'm not. Okay, it's um, already in there. It's already in there. Thank okay. you, Mr. Booth. I'm good. Uh, Mr. Thacker. Uh, just want to remove item 10 from the consent agenda. Wait, item 10. Ten. What from the business and finance part? Mm -hmm. Item ten. Are you? Yeah. We'll do it on its own. Okay. So. <laughs> That's not. That's between eleven and nine, right? That would be the one between eleven. Between I, I, I sense. I sense <laughs> some trouble there. Okay, um, Mr. Weissire. Uh, Mr. Thacker beat me to it. <laughs> uh, Superintendent. Yes, sir. And um, yeah, let's pull number ten out. All right. I'll move to approve the uh, agenda with the uh, modification. Second. The okay. Motion to approve the consent agenda with the modification of removing number ten by Mr. Thacker, second by Mr. Roof. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Then the motion passes 5 0. All right, so on item number 10, what is your pleasure, Mr. Thacker? Uh, I just thought since he had made the effort to come down here and he's making the effort to serve on the audit committee, I thought we would just do this item and I'll move for approval. Second. All right. so Chris Mack is a new addition to the audit committee. Uh, may I ask Mr. Mack to please approach the podium? Hello, everyone. Chris Mack. I don't understand that motion, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Is there any discussion here? No, don't wait. Okay. This, okay. So um, I see that you have an application pending for um, audit, committee. audit committee member. If that is your intention, sir. Yes, it is. Okay. So mm -hmm. we have before us a motion to approve your appointment by Mr. Thacker. I have a discussion. Discussion. By Mr. Weissire. Pending discussion by Mr. Booth. How do you feel you're going to be valuable to the audit advisory committee? Uh, well, <laughs> oh, well, I'm a trained professional. I'm a Florida licensed attorney. I've been doing the uh, professional attorney thing for a while now. I help people on a daily basis. Hundreds of people have been helped by my law practice and my, my brain. So I'd like to donate my time in that regard. Thank you for your service, your answer, sir. I, I'll, uh, I will accept this nomination. <sighs> What, I got another comment. So what does it mean to you to inspire learners to reach their highest potential? Well, I think that might be a little bit beyond my direct scope <laughs> of what I'm being uh, pointed to. But if I can find a way to achieve the mission statement, I will do so. All right. you, and Mr. Smack, do you happen to have any, anybody professionally who can vouch for you at present? Many people, yes. <laughs> Mr. Everybody Wheeler is one of them. Everybody on the board. <laughs> yeah, I happen to know all of you, so. Yeah. Call the question. Wait. All right, so well, all right, so I, we have, have quick discussion. Oh wait, <laughs> well, I'll yield. I'll yield. Okay, good. There you go. The roasting shall continue. No, <laughs> I, I, I just want to, Mr. Thacker said it. You took the time to be here. You yep. offered yourself Appreciate in service it. to this community, mm -hmm. to this board, and I know that that was the intent behind Mr. Thacker pulling the item, was to say thank you for not only your interest in serving, mm -hmm. but also for taking the time out of your very important, very busy schedule to come and be a part of this tonight. So thank you. Yep. And he's a new dad. And yes. a new day. Congratulations. And, and I would I would never recommend or for appointment someone who I didn't feel just like everyone here shares our sincere um, desire to serve the students of this county. And Mr. Mack has never <coughs> demonstrated Julius anything Morris. less. Julius <laughs> anything less. <laughs> so um, I'm glad that I'm glad that you pulled this item out. Um, I think that Mr. Mack waited patiently and <laughs> um, you know for his appointment and he deserved this extra extra attention that he got. So we have a motion to approve by. Mr. Thacker, second by Mr. Weissire. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. The motion passes 5 0. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. you, gentlemen. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Hey, Chris. Okay. Mr. Chairman, no oh, information item, sorry. Yeah, we have information item. So, we first one is the, um, the monthly business advisory board meeting. Mm -hmm. 
Good. It's in the packet. Just in the packet. These are just for board review, and we're happy to answer any questions that you have, but there's no presentation on any of them. Okay, oh. very well. Or then we move on to the regular agenda items. Mr. Chairman, I will uh, move to approve items A and B under curriculum and instruction. Second. All right, so we have a motion to approve curriculum instructions item A and B by Mr. Booth, a second by Mr. Weisheyer. Um, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Our motion passes 5 0. 4. 4 0, Mr. Booth. Oh, somebody? Not here. Oh, yeah, uh, Jay oh, is. Oh. Here. But isn't but because we have a majority, we could enter a five on his behalf. No, really, I was reading. No, the book. I was. No, I'm not four. kidding, man. I was reading the book. Anyways, <laughs> four, it's four zero. All right, four's good. <laughs> that's how they do it in Orange County. That's the, rule. That's that's the, the case. Specific. I'm not missing a vote ever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not letting you guys that, vote for me. Yes, actually, in our just <laughs> brief discussion, in uh, certain counties, they do if uh, you are not present to prevent you from not being recorded as a voter. They will put you on as the majority of the vote. Correct. Mm -hmm. Even in your absence. Correct. Mr. Right. Soto, stop reading those books. <laughs> <laughs> we went to ethics training together. <laughs> so you were there. No, no, no. Oh, he, Tim I went to my own. Oh, <laughs> I went to the real one. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, so we could go on to number nine, which is the um, academic calendar. I have a motion on that. I'll make a motion to approve as, as submitted. All right. This is to just lengthen the Wednesdays, correct? Correct. It's the early release days, yeah. Mm -hmm. Second. All right, so we've got a motion to approve item C under Deputy Superintendent for Human Resources by Mr. Wheeler, second by Mr. Booth. All those in favor, state aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes 5 0. All right, so Business and Finance Board. Make I'll a motion to approve items D through P as submitted. Second. Okay. All right, so we have a motion to approve under business and finance items D through P by Mr. Wheeler, second by Mr. Thacker. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion passes 5 0. Facilities. Approve items Q through X. Uh, um, Mr. Thacker, I'd like you to pull item T sure. for discussion. Motion to approve Q through X, less item T. Second. All right, so under facilities, we have a motion to approve by Mr. Thacker's item Q through X with, with the exception of T. Second by Mr. Weissire. Um, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion passes 5 0 with the exception on item Ms. T. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item T. All right. Second. Discussion. All right, so we've got a motion to approve T by Mr. Booth, second by Mr. Weissire. Discussion by Mr. Wheeler. Please proceed. I guess the question I've got. I'll direct it to you, Dr. Pace, and then you can direct it out, is I've got no problem proceeding with this school. The, pro the issue I've got is based, predicated upon the meeting we just had. We're waiting for your geotechnical review to come back to tell us if this is affordable or not on this piece of property. In the event that the geotechnical review comes back and shows that it's an extra five, ten, twenty million dollars to shore up this piece of property, are we jumping the gun on, on the entire piece of this? And I'm not trying to slow the project down, but we, we're, it's like you got to have the geotechnical information, et cetera. So I, I don't know if, I, I, I don't want to hold it up, but there is this real issue. And I, I don't know where we are with that. Well, I think that you made a very valid point in the workshop, Mr. Wheeler, and that we really do need to be thinking about items B, or, you know, plans B and C, should this not work. But I can assure you that we're not going to bring forward additional recommendations on this project, and we won't go any further beyond where we think it's going to be fiscally sound and responsible to move it forward. But we can't even move forward with the geotechnical piece without the firm site plan. That's what this will start, correct, Mr. Clinch? Please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, we need the site plan to know where the buildings uh, are located so that we can determine where the soil boring uh, locations would be identified. Okay, so if we spend the $1.1 million on here, okay, and we find out after we spend the $1.1 million, are we going to spend all of it to find out if the site's suitable or not? We would be at a point where we could pull back the design to install it, uh, to suspend it. Right, I understand that. So the geotech is folded into that 1.1 million? No, no, the geotech is performed by the owner, as is the environmental surveying, etc. But they can't do the geotech without the site plan. 
okay, so I guess so we're going to spend all of this money on a site plan to find out, then do geotech, and then we find out, based on the geotech, that this may be, is it going to work financially for us, then we're out the $1.1 million plus the geotechnical dollars? The, the fee, no. The current design fee is, what, is the full design fee. It includes uh, the site, the building, right. everything associated with the design for this project, includes services. Okay, so the $1.1 million is an incl all include, it's all an all-in price. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I guess that the question then still goes begging, okay, we approve this, and you need a piece of this to get the geotech done, is my understanding, correct, but not the whole 1.1 million. Yes, we are proceeding with the geotech concurrently. And I'm not discouraging that. We don't that. have those results yet. We're uh, awaiting preliminary geotech. I would like to, is there any way we can approve this contingent upon the, it being a suitable, I mean, if we find out it's prohibitively $5 million more or $10 million more expensive, I mean, I'm just, I, I was in the same meeting we were all in, and I, I just, and I'm not trying to slow it down, but that's a legitimate concern. And I absolutely agree, Mr. Wheeler, and appreciate the cautionary um, direction that we're getting from the board, and, and absolutely, Mr. Clinch and I will move forward with caution. We, we, we do anyway. That's, that's the way of work. But if we don't get this process started, Okay we will not be able to meet the schedule that we've committed okay. to for an August so, opening. So I guess we've the next never, ever tried to open a school beyond the beginning of oh, school. Oh, I'm with you on that. So the question At I'm the same time, Mr. Wheeler, is if we move forward and this becomes not feasible for that particular site, we take that plan and we put it on another site if that's what we have to do, or we bring forward a different recommendation, and we're most certainly not going to pay for something that we're not going to get and be in a place to use. Okay, cause, yeah, okay, because yeah, it doesn't say where the site is. It just says 1.1 million for design and construction. Okay, when when will we have the geotech information in hand? Any idea? The purchase order is currently being processed. Okay. And now that we have a site plan, we can provide direction where to uh, obtain those soil borings. So I would say that we'd have preliminary findings in the next three to four weeks. And who's that from? Uh, I believe Universal okay. is our geotech. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I, I, I'm willing to support this, but I just wanted to, you know, bring this up with the board that, you know, I, I'm hoping that this is all for nothing, <laughs> really, but I know what happened in the land with the land high school, and, you know, it, it increased the project by over $20 million. That's a lot of money. I, I don't see that. Necessarily. I hope not. I hope I'm wrong, Ricky. Well, I don't want to be right. <laughs> no, no, yes. All right. Mr. Weissheimer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wheel, I raised some of the same concerns and questions that you had and, and spoke with Mr. Clinch in between our workshop and our board meeting as well, um, because I do want to make sure that we're moving forward um, with a site that actually can be buildable, and I think your concern raised is one that I agree with. I do note that in the agenda packet, it has the reuse fee is $807,000 of that $1.1 million and change, which is the architectural component and everything else. I also uh, would just say to both superintendent and staff that obviously if we go forward and, and things start to reveal themselves, you do know what the concern of the board is, which I know is your concern as well. And so I think the key thing is just making sure you keep us apprised of how this is moving forward. And as soon as we see any red flag, if at all, with that site, please make sure we know about it right away. Absolutely. We'll watch this one very closely, monitor it very closely, and we'll apprise you of any uh, issues that, that arise. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. That's good. Anything further? All right, so we have a motion pending. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passes 5 0. Um, we have so next is the. Um, item 15. Update. No, you got um, item, item 15. 15. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Oh, yeah. All right. On item so, 15. Is this that Kruppenbacher contract we're looking yeah. at now? Is he here? Yeah, yes, he's, he's in the back of the room. Oh, it was the second. <laughs> All right. Any discussion, board? Um, oh, motion to item Y. Under a, the only discussion I'll say, Mr. Soto, thank you for working to get this um, on the agenda. We appreciate all your efforts. Mr. Martyr, we appreciate your, your efforts. Can and I your, take the nameplate with me? Just yes. That, yes. Can we get that approved, too? It's, it, yes. That's part of the motion. I know. Just a quick, just, just, just a brief comment. Um, uh, first of all, I, I realize that I think that most, if not all, the members of the board um, know Mr. Krupenbacher for longer than I do. Um, I've gotten to know him during this process. I feel that we're getting a very wise and, um, needless to say, competent, but 
someone with a lot of insight that is really committed to the education of this county. And so um, I am very proud to go ahead and make this motion. Um, there's a motion oh, after Mr. Weishire's comments. Yeah, yeah I just want to comment because uh, Frank, looking forward to working with you. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate your interest in working with this board. And I, I didn't want to miss the opportunity also while we're sitting here as well to acknowledge Michael and your team. And as we've shared throughout this process, I've, I, as I've shared with you personally and I've shared in our workshops as well as the <coughs> RFP interview process, I want you to know it's not lost on me uh, how grateful we are and we should be for the fact that your team has been alongside of us for a very long period of time. And I want you to know personally and professionally, I do appreciate that and respect you for it. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Wheeler? Um, I'd just also like to add um, for Greenspoon Martyr and your team, I think you've done a great job. And plus on top of that, you know, one of the things that um, came up earlier relative to our communication with the community and getting community support for some of the things we've done, um, I appreciate that Greenspoon Martyr made a sizable contribution to that end in the, memory, in the name of the memory of Larry Brown. Um, and we were successful and I know that if Larry was here, he would be thrilled that we, that we passed that. So I appreciate your team and your efforts. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Martyr. Right, so we have a motion to approve item Y, By um, Professional Services Agreement for Legal Services, Frank Kupenbarker, PA by Mr. Wheeler. Second by Mr. Booth. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion passes 5-0. And I think that's about all there is for board votes. Next item is the graduation rate update. Dr. Yes, Pace. thank you, Chairman Soto and members of the board. I am pleased today to share some positive news about the work that this district is doing as it amounts to graduation rates. In my previous role in the district as a high school principal and as a deputy superintendent, this became a charge from the, for the superintendent at the time, Dr. Grego, to really aggressively attack this issue and to put a system in place to help continue to improve it. And under Mrs. Luciano's leadership, staff has continued to show growth in this particular area, moving this year from 80.6% in 1415 to an 82% graduation rate in 1516. Slide two shows you how we compare to other districts in the Central Florida Coalition. If you remember with our strategic plan goal, we said that we were going to equal or better the top school district in terms of graduation rate in this area. So our goal was originally 86%. Now with Seminole's growth, we're moving toward an 88% graduation rate is what Dr. Fritz and the high school principals and Dr. Reinhardt and the team will be aggressively working on over the next two years. Also wanted to share with you that there is a difference um, in terms of graduation rate with and without our charter schools. Do keep in mind that graduation rates are lagged a year for accountability purposes. So it will be that 82% number that's used in calculating the district grade for 2016-17, the current school year. Also wanted to share with you some news that I think is very, very important. We talk about all means all. And so we're looking not just at the traditional and traditional graduation rate, but we're also looking at what's happening within our district population with our subgroups. And again, Janine Jarvis's team has done some great work breaking it down with districts or with charter schools as well as without. And you can see that our students with disabilities, our ELL students, our free and reduced lunch students, our black students, our Hispanic students, are performing at a high rate. Not as high as our white students, we do have a gap, but we are closing that gap. And one of the other things I can share with you is that over time, some of these key numbers have continued to improve. Free and reduced lunch since 2011-12 has moved from 72.8% to 80.5%. Our ELL population is not growing as fast, but is continuing to grow. 61.9% to 63.7%. And I'm very pleased with the growth that we're seeing in our students with disabilities for a regular diploma within that four-year four -year cohort, moving from 49.6% to 63%, 63.5 in just a five-year period. So the numbers are moving in the right direction to help us address these gaps. Here before you, you have the individual high school graduation rates from 1415 to 1516. Many of our schools did improve, although not all of them, and we will be working significantly with those schools as we move forward. 
And I wanted to share with you just a few highlights. As I mentioned before, there were some subgroup improvements that we're very, very proud of, in particular when you start looking at individual schools. For example, the ELL graduation rate at Zenith increased by 11% and at St. Cloud by 6%. Gateway and Liberty and Osceola, Point Siena and Zenith showed significant increases in our students with disabilities graduation rate. Liberty with 27%. And this then shows some information that Chairman Soto asked us to look a little bit further at. As you know, the traditional graduation rate is a four year cohort measurement. So students who enter a high school in the ninth grade year have the four year period of time to graduate to be counted as a graduate within this cohort. Of our graduation cohort, we have a dropout rate of only 2.3%. Wow. Right. That's significant and it compares very, very well with the other districts in the Central Florida Coalition, as you can see by the information on this chart. Certificates of completion is an area where we know we have to improve. These are students who've met the 24 graduate re graduation credit requirement, but either who have not yet achieved success on the FSA or Algebra 1 EOC, or earned a concordance score, or who have a GPA based less than 2000, or 2.0. Uh, 2 this is an area that, like I said, is, an, is of significant concern because ours is higher than some of our neighboring districts. And we know that certificates of completion present a real challenge for students who want to go on into post-secondary, into the military, or those types of things. So we're really going to be working hard with our high schools on those particular numbers. But the other number that I wanted to share with you is the percentage of students still enrolled. That 7.7% number is out of that graduation cohort. These are students who, while they didn't graduate within that four year period, are continuing on. They're close enough to stay in our schools, work in our impact labs, and meet the graduation requirements with just a little bit more time. That we think is impressive and it compares very, very well to our neighboring districts. And finally, I wanted to share with you some data. As you mentioned earlier, we had the wonderful check presentation with CFE and Valencia. They are tremendous partners. But an area of concern that I noticed as I was applying for the superintendent's position that we've talked about before is the percentage of our graduating seniors who are going on to college. We know that's not the only option, but we want them enrolling in some type of post-secondary planning to be competitive in the global economy. In 2011, that number was 41%, and we ranked in the bottom third of counties in the state of Florida. By 2014, with some of the efforts of Gut College, that number is up to 45% and moving in the right direction. We now have the capacity to also measure SDOC post-secondary plans with confirmed acceptance, acceptances through Ms. Lopez and her work with our college and career counselors. Now this is not an apples to apples kind of number. I want to make sure I'm cautionary in that. Because right. the number 41 and 45 percent represent the percentage of students enrolling in a Florida public university. That's a number that's published by the state. It lags two years. But the 58.1 percent number we still believe is a good solid number of students who told us last year and who demonstrated to us that they had been accepted to a college or university post-secondary program. So I do believe our GOT college culture is growing and demonstrating success. It's going to take a while longer to move that Florida public university enrollment number, but we are moving in the right direction, and that was something that I felt like it was important to share. Also wanted to share with you what that number looks like in other districts. Again, this 2014 GOT college number is the solid number that is published by DOE. We've showed it for the Central Florida Coalition over the four-year period. We still have growth to do there for certain, but it is improving. And then the 2015 numbers will not be reported for two years, and we have our own post-secondary plan letter. So again, this comes back to our overall mission of moving from good to great within our strategic plan, academic success for all. And we truly do mean all of our students. I'd be happy to answer questions or staff can assist with that. All right, Mr. Wheeler. First off, Dr. Pace, Dr. Fritz, your team, this is exactly what I knew you could do. 
and exi but I know you, there's, there's a lot of work this isn't left. This my work. Oh, there's a lot of, I know, a lot of, a lot of people are, are. Mrs. Luciano and her team put, laid the groundwork and I know for you're this gonna to happen. And I know that you are anxious to improve upon that and are moving in the right direction. With that said, um, I'm glad you pointed out the fact that when we show an 80, 85% graduation rate, that doesn't mean 20 to 15% of the kids are dropping out. I mean, it's just they don't fit a statistical model. And I'm glad that you pointed that out. I would like to see in the future, with that number, uh, with the post-secondary plans, I'd like to see if we know what percentage maybe opted for the military also. I consider the, a, a, a student, a young man or young lady who decides college isn't the right thing, but going into the Air Force or the Navy or, or the Army or the Marines or Coast Guard is the right move for them. I consider that to be as good a move and in some cases better for some students than going into college um, because not, every, not everything every student should go to college necessarily. So I'd like to see that also. And then again, if we have any tracking relative to students who maybe didn't choose the military, maybe they didn't choose college, but they are pursuing a career at, in law enforcement or in a, one of the, in a trade as an electrician, a plumber, HVAC, et cetera, I think that is as value, if not more value also, because again, not every student, not, not everybody is a round peg and a round hole. Um, I think that we are moving in the right direction based on what we had earlier, the conversation we had about our strategic plan. I'm very excited. This is great information. Thank you for sharing it with us. Mm -hmm. And to your team, I know you've put together an amazing team of superstars across the board, especially the curriculum team. She's always bragging about you guys. Um, so, you know, keep on keeping on, make it happen. Let's see some, you know, just, I know it's only going to get better. Thank you for what you're doing. Dr. Pace, this is great information. Thank you. Mr. Weissmeyer. Thank you. I just want to say, uh, echo the thank you to everybody that's worked so hard to uh, bridge these gaps. And Amanda, thank yeah, you for your ongoing work and everything that you do. And then Dr. Pace, I appreciate um, you getting this information out to us in advance and also adding in slides that were of particular importance to specific board members. So thanks for your responsiveness on that. Absolutely. Anyone else? Uh, just briefly, I want to make a few, few comments real, real quick. Um, I believe this is this is good news. Um, I want to explain just a few things um, to the board from my perspective on this. Um, you know, I, I came on this board in 2012, and one of the first um, indicators that I looked at on the data was graduation rates, and I looked at also the number of students that pursue public, you know, public um, post-graduation um, enrollment, and. You know, it was, I think, 39% or 41, one of those two numbers. And, you know, it just seemed awful low. I didn't know what to gauge it in. I, sometimes when you deal with this, when you're dealing with statistics and percentage, you, you really need to have a frame of reference. For example, you know, if you have a baseball, you know, baseball player that hits, you know, 350, that, that, that's phenomenal. Can you imagine if there's a group of players or owners or managers to say, well, that's so far from 1.00, you know, you really should be getting about 0.7. What's wrong with you, man? Basically, you can learn from that analogy that there's a certain point where it's like reaching the speed of light. You never can get there. It takes too much energy just to increase it. And if you look at the, this, this um, presentation that was prepared by Dr. Pace and her staff, it's, one of, it's really one of the, the best presentations that I've seen. I've really enjoyed these um, PowerPoints because they're so easy to understand, so easy to follow. And it gives you the information that's very important, Mr. Wheeler. For example, when you look at a graduation rate, you know, by the time a school district of our size gets to about 89, 88, or 89, that's really equivalent, in my opinion, to that 380 hitter or that 0.4 here. It's only a 400 hitter. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's very close to that. I mean, you know, no, after that, after that, you got to, you know, George things, Brett, 1985. things are getting a little bit, after, after 90%, you really want to look at whether the numbers are correct or what's going on. Um, the other point is, is that I begin, from your slides, I realized the same thing, you know, that maybe when we get to post-secondary rates of about 60%, you know, there you're looking again, you know, you got, you know, you got a district that's performing like that, you know, like that top, top of the line, you know, hitter, you know. You hit into 400, you know, you're doing a work. Um, and finally, my last is the observations on your, on your individual high school graduation rates. Um, you see that we have some high, first of all, you can see that the charter schools are not faring very well. 
and and I'm not going into the specific as to why. It's um, you know I'm pretty you know there's good there's you could analyze it and find out the, the answers to that. But look at our graduate look at our high schools, our traditional high schools. Um, they're 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 um, all above the um, eighty percent. You have eighty one at Liberty per, Liberty eighty one percent. So if we look at eighty nine, there's a lot of things that could be done there. I mean, so that's that's um, that's the part we could focus on. But then you have eighty nine percent Harmony, eighty nine percent St. Cloud. Um, School for the Arts one hundred percent. I'm, I'm going to leave that one out. That's a, that's called an outlier. <laughs> I mean, it's not a, it's, it doesn't really fall into the same conditions and parameters that the other schools have. Um, Gateway 86, two, two, three percent. Got you know that's where it's got the focus at. So, to me at least, it gave me that frame of reference that was important for us. So when we come up to the strategic plan, we can start talking about what are meaningful numbers, you know, in terms of what we want to see. And if we can, and if you can take the same approach to understanding, you know, math proficiency rates and things like that, I think is very helpful. All right. Uh, Mr. Weissheyer. Uh, Chairman, have you advanced the conversation at all of where things leave off with the idea that uh, you implemented with Gateway High School graduation and having a recognition for the students with knowing what their post-secondary plans are? And I think you know what I'm talking about as they walk across the stage and they have that key identifier uh, that gives us that extra opportunity to congratulate them on their uh, not only success in graduating but also uh, with their focus on knowing what the next step in their academic or um, vocational uh, pathway is going to look like. Have you advanced that conversation any further? Or? You know, I, you know, looking at outcomes is a little bit harder to do, you know, until you have enough data to say, okay, where did this thing, would something happen different because of something is, it's not easily to tell. Here's, here's what I shared with the board previously about that, is that it goes back to what we were talking about our strategic um, goals, about changing a culture, you know, in a school. And, and you know trying it in a, in a in a small cohort and then see how that can whether that could be generalized to do it in a you know in a district wide with gateway one of the things that I that I spoke with mr. Meadows is that you know a lot of times you know young minds really need to be motivated they could be motivated by so many things um, recognition is something that everyone craves in the military the they make a big deal out of those things. I kid you not. I, I, I never understood it while I was in the military. <laughs> but afterwards, um, I got to understand what, what happens. And I don't know whether that really helped cause any change in the graduation rate of Gateway. I, I would think it's very small var variable, if any. I think his question but, was that it was just a nice rec recognition for, for them and for Yeah, it, 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 it is. They, they love it. They, but whether that has any thing to do that has any significant contribution to these numbers? I doubt it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not implying that it yeah. does. Yeah. I mean, it, it may, it could. I know some of the thermometer work and some of the tracking and some of the things that you guys that have That does going work. I think the effort from, I think our, the effort from our guidance does have a significant right. impact, but I've seen them in action. And I acknowledge that. My point is I'm not trying to make a one-for-one -one comparison with them, but I did think it was a good idea. Um, I do think it's that one extra way that we can recognize these students. Um, mm -hmm. It does uh, help us as board members as we're engaging and encouraging those students as they're walking across the stage to be able to, in that very brief moment, have one more opportunity to encourage them. Uh, we know that many times students will uh, finish high school with all the goals and dreams, um, but then maybe not have that extra little nudge of encouragement to actually get there, whether it's because of life or finances or other circumstances. I just tend to like the idea of it. Um, I don't need to camp on it. If the other board members aren't of interest in it, that's I fine. I um, but I, I just, it's, it was a good idea. I think, it's, um, I think it's worthwhile, and I'd like to see it expanded across the district. I, well, you know, I mean, it, what it took from me was a couple of, a few meetings with um, Mr. Meadows. Mm -hmm. Always, you know, check with the principal to see how they feel about it. And, and you know, obviously you want to design the award to be the school colors. Uh, you want every student to have it. If they have nothing else around their necks, that little pin, that means that they're going somewhere. And you, I think that was your comment when we were at the stage together. Uh, yeah, know, and I'm you, asking you because I know you were. You know, the, you, know you, you want to talk about variables. Sphere. You want to talk about variables. I think that what the guidance department is doing is great. Dr. Plisky is doing is great. I think that, um, but the biggest one is at home. Whether they have an adult that's paying attention to them and giving them recognition at home. 
what they're doing in school and continuing to reinforce how poor education is for their future. Dr. Pace, I'd like to see it expanded. I, I hear you. I'm with you. Dr. Fritz is making a note. I'm with you. Uh, any other comments? None? No, I'm good. All right, so finally, man, I've been waiting this. What, for Jay? We're, we're all here for, yeah. Oh, I'm finished me. business, Mr. Wheeler. Um, yeah, I'll be brief. Um, really? Quick. <laughs> yes, I'll be brief, Mr. Booth, really. Um, Mr. Clinch, you sent an email out relative to the ESCO agreements, and you're going to bring back something in, in March for us to review. Is that correct? Yes. We're, uh, our plan is to bring pro preliminary findings in March. Okay. So we're currently vetting through all the pieces and parts of the, uh, the ESCO approach. Uh, there, as you might imagine, there are many pieces and parts with uh, um, you know, how, how do you project the savings, looking at what do you do within the ESCO. Do you limit it to one component or several? We're looking at LED lighting, mm -hmm. uh, energy conservation med measures, water energy conservation measures, and chillers as an energy conservation measure. Unfortunately, the chillers don't produce a lot of savings, right. and that's why we need to carry the other energy conservation measures, because at the end of the day, we have to stay within the parameters of the performance contracting right. model, which requires that we fund those improvements through savings. Well, so, okay, I'm not going to get into the weeds right now with you. So the question I've got for you is this. When can we, when can the board expect something we can vote on? It would be dependent on what we bring forward with the preliminary findings. We could bring something forward that doesn't support being able to go forward. I understand. I'm not, I, that's why I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you that I expect X or Y. I'm just wondering when we have something we can vote on. The, and so the next question I've got for you. And assuming yes, sir. we did come Well, relative to the terms and conditions in an agreement, for as far insofar as a template without a scope, I mean, you, the state has got templates, the vendors have got templates. I'm sure that you could get something to the attorney that, with without a scope, that meets the parameters relative to the, the language requirements. I mean, that, that's that's there's there's a hundred of those out there. I guess the question I'm going to is March 22nd, we have a facilities update scheduled at four o'clock in that workshop, and. Maybe instead of doing it at a board meeting, you take a few, I mean, I'll let you get with Dr. Pace. He'll decide, but take, I wouldn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes, you know, send some information in advance, but that, but that might be a good time to go over some of this or to take two minutes and say, we decided not to move forward and just going to pay for the audits, et cetera. I'm not telling you which direction to go to, to go into, but I think that we need to bring this to a head one way or the other. Um, that's all I'll say. Now, I do think, I will say this, from a to the board and to staff. Um, because of the ever-growing list of deferred maintenance projects that are that just, just for a district the size of us, with the number of, of, of build, with the assets we've got, every year there's going to be a certain percentage of stuff that just needs to be done. It's infrastructure. Uh, and I know we got the sales tax passed. I think that's great. Um, I do think that we can't afford to use some performance contracting as a strategy to get some work done. Is it, it's not an end-all, be. I'm not suggesting we do a $100 million project. But I do think that it needs to be one component because we need stuff. And you brought up a great point. I mean, LED lighting, you could do an entire district conversion on LED lighting with a performance contracting, improve the, the learning environment for students, and use some of that savings to pay for other stuff, which I'm not suggesting you do or don't do. But I'm, because you brought it up, I'm just drawing that, uh, I'm illustrating that point. So. You know, you let us know what you come up with. I'll I'll talk to you offline. But I think these vendors, and they there's and they're smart guys. They realize that the RFP went out before you and Dr. Pace were even here. Um, they went through this, you know, and that, then there's a new team in place. I think they've been patient. They've been supportive. But I think, in fairness to everybody, I think we just need to bring this to a head, one way or the other. Absolutely. So that's all the comments I've got on this board. All right. And, sure. and we will continue to diligently. And I'll talk to you <coughs> offline. Good. Augmented by other uh, staff members as well. I understand. And we will continue to look at all possible delivery options for future projects, including uh, public-private partnerships and and the, the 
sales tax passage is not the end all. No, I get that. It does not get us to where we need to be with our deferred maintenance. It will take many different, different creative right. strategies to get us But to with that said, the sales tax was really helpful. <laughs> Okay, thank you. That's all I've got for it. All right, thank you, Mr. Wheeler. Board, is there anything else left to discuss before I adjourn this meeting? Adjourn it. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone. Dr. Pace, thank you again for the graduation day. That was awesome.